Hi, I'm Simon Lloyd from IS Global. Thanks very much for taking a look at this video, which accompanies our poster on the influence of sociodemographic factors on heat-related mortality in Europe. Uh, this works part of the ERC-funded Early Adapt project, which is being run out of IS Global. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, and thank my co-authors who are listed on the poster. Uh, I want to briefly talk about three things. First of all, what's novel about this work? What our approach allowed us to see? And some general implications for adaptation. So firstly, what's novel about this work? Well, we know that heat kills, and we know that the situation is likely to get worse with climate change. We also know that various social and material factors modify the risk of heat-related death, and this gives us clues about how we could adapt. Um, but here are some gaps. So firstly, while risk is important, what we ultimately care about is how many people actually die due to heat. And this is a function of both risk and underlying mortality rates. Now importantly, underlying mortality rates are shaped by the very same social factors that influence risk. So if we want to understand how social factors shape heat death, we need to look at how they influence both risk and underlying mortality. But existing work hasn't done this. Secondly, we know that social factors influence one another. We know they're not independent, but previous work treats them as if they are. And this means the influence of a particular social factor may be either over or underestimated. Thirdly, uh, extreme heat gets a lot of attention, and rightly so. But the majority of heat-related deaths actually occur at more moderate temperatures. And at these temperatures, heat alone isn't sufficient to kill. Heat's acting in concert with other causes. So compared to extreme temperatures, social factors probably matter more at moderate temperatures, and they probably matter differently but previous work hasn't really accounted for this. So we developed statistical models that look at how sociodemographic socio factors influence heat mortality in Europe. And what's novel about these models is that they consider both risk and underlying mortality, they account for the relations between social factors, and they consider moderate and extreme heat separately. And for this work, we limited the social factors that we considered to education, life expectancy, an ageing index, and relative income. So what did our approach allow us to see? Firstly, the direct effects of a given factor on heat mortality may be reinforced or counteracted by its indirect effects operating via other factors. And for instance, we found this with education. Secondly, a given factor may increase risk at a given temperature range, but at the same time, it may decrease underlying mortality rates. So to understand the overall effect the factor has on heat deaths, looking at risk alone isn't sufficient. For instance, this was the case with life expectancy. Thirdly, a given factor may have no influence on risk at a given temperature range, but at the same time it may increase underlying mortality rates. So if you only consider risk, um, something that may have a strong influence on a number of heat deaths may be missed entirely. Uh, for instance, we found this with the ageing index. Fourthly, uh, which factors matter and how much they matter differed for moderate and extreme temperatures, although our work isn't able to untangle the underlying mechanisms that are operating. So in other words, the gaps that I initially described all appear to actually be important. So, what are some general implications for adaptation of this work? Well, firstly, while social factors influence risk at extreme temperatures, the risk remains high, and extreme temperatures are dangerous in themselves for biological reasons. So we, of course, need early warning systems and protective actions that, activate, uh, that are activated when it's going to be extremely hot. But at, mo at more moderate heat, uh, which occurs very frequently, and during which most heat deaths actually occur, well, here we could consider heat deaths to be an indicator of the social determinants that generate vulnerability. So these are the sort of determinants that are shaped by education or that life expectancy reflects, for instance. So actually, at these more moderate temperatures, adaptation isn't only about targeting heat or about only focusing on older people. It's about improving general population health and addressing factors that generate vulnerability over the life course. So that is, part of heat adaptation needs to focus on temperatures, but part of it sits squarely in mainstream health policy and practice. As Jesse Rebo put it, vulnerability doesn't fall from the sky. Uh, it arises from the conditions of everyday life. So if you want to know more about uh, the paper, uh, it, it's currently under review, um, so please keep an eye out for it. Or if you'd like to, please, please feel free to get in touch with myself. Thanks a lot for watching.